a rebellious teen who has a difficult time adjusting to her life in a new city, undergoes mysterious physical changes, prompting her to question where she really came from. In her bedroom in the new apartment, Mia spins in her chair surrounded by unopened moving boxes. Then in the hallway, she watches her mother Gabriella spray air freshener all over the space. Later, she attends her first day in a new school which is currently in the middle of the academic year. Their teacher Eric asks Roberto a question, and the students' answers elicit laughter from the class, including the leader of the popular girl clique, Gianna. During recess, Sophie approaches Mia and introduces herself. When she sees the new student curiously observing Gianna's friend group, she tells her to stay wary of the known troublemakers. Despite the warning, the teen approaches the group and tries to strike up a conversation. However, they treat her coldly and walk back to class. After school, Gabriella asks her daughter how her first day went, and when she sees the sad look on her face, she asks the teen to talk to her about it. The daughter isn't in the mood to have a heartfelt conversation with the mother and tells her to get out. When the woman gently touches her, Mia angrily pushes her off the bed. Realizing what she'd done, the teen rushes to her mother's side and apologizes profusely. Later, her father Michael reprimands her for the incident earlier and reminds her to never treat Gabriella that way. That night, Mia goes to the kitchen, pours salt into a glass of water, and chugs it down. Then she enters her parents' bedroom and lies next to Gabriella, who takes her daughter in her arms. The next day, the class votes on where their next class trip is going to be. Despite the amusement park Connyland being none of the choices, Gianna starts a chant to force the teacher to include it. When only one vote is needed for Connyland to win, Mia uses this as an opportunity to get in the popular kids' good graces and chooses the amusement park. After school, Roberto playfully slaps the teen's backside as he passes her. Then she approaches Gianna and her friends who tease her. As she starts to walk away, the clique leader follows and continues mocking the new student. Roberto tells Gianna to cut it out, so she introduces herself, as well as her friends Nelly and Vivi. Suddenly, Sophie passes by and asks Mia if she's okay, but the teen rudely tells her to leave her alone. Eventually, they ask her to hang out with them, and the group heads over to Gianna's home. There, the clique leader asks her father to sign the permission slip for the Connie Land trip. When she sees the man smile at the new student, she tells her father to stop acting creepily, embarrassing him. Then they go to Gianna's bedroom where the shy teen observes the three friends as they casually discuss their experiences with guys. Moments later, they tease Mia by showing her an adult video on a laptop. They ask if she's ever slept with a guy before, but before she can answer, Gianna says she can tell that she hasn't. So they take her picture and set up a dating profile for the teen, who says she's attracted to older guys. Seconds later, Gianna playfully tussles with her two friends before strangling Vivi. The friend tells her to cut it out, and Mia asks what they're doing. The clique leader says she wants the shy teen to choke her, and when she does as she's told, Gianna loses consciousness and collapses on the bed. Eventually, she wakes up and proceeds to do the same thing to Mia when she says she'd like to give it a try. When she wakes up, she tells them that she needs to go home. In the apartment, Mia hears the bubbling noise from the aquarium and impulsively grabs a fish and eats it. However, she immediately feels sick and throws up in the bathroom. When she hears her mother knocking on the door, she quickly flushes the evidence. That night, the teen checks the dating profile and sees that she received a message. The next morning, she hands her father Michael the permission slip to sign and he says to leave it on the counter. At school, the insecure teen wipes off her lipstick and removes her hoop earrings. Then she sees Gianna and her friends walking away from school and decides to tail them. She catches up to them and asks where they're headed, and they say they're going shopping. Before going to the mall, Gianna takes a pregnancy test in a restroom, and the friends nervously wait for the results. When it yields a negative result, the friends cheer joyfully. Later, while strolling in the mall, they see Vivi's boyfriend kissing another girl, and Gianna comforts her friend. For the rest of the day, the group wanders from shop to shop, deftly placing stolen items into their bags and pockets. At first, Mia just watches the others, but soon participates in the petty crime. Eventually, she sees a guard eyeing them and warns the others, prompting the group to scatter and escape. Mia and Gianna run out of the mall and stop to catch their breath atop a footbridge over the highway. The teens share a bottle of alcohol, and the popular girl lifts her shirt at the passing cars, and the shy teen copies her. Seconds later, they stare into each other's eyes for a beat and are about to kiss, when Nelly and Vivi join them. That afternoon, Mia opens the dating profile and responds to the man's message, asking if he'd 
like to meet up. In the bathroom, she sees a red stain on her undergarments and realizes it's her first time of the month. While shaving her legs in the tub, Mia notices that her second and third toes have somehow fused together. Alarmed, she heads to the bedroom to take a closer look. Suddenly, her mother knocks on the door to ask her why two of the fish are missing from the aquarium. At first, she feigns ignorance, but eventually says she flushed them away. Furious, the woman slaps her daughter for what she did. The next morning, Mia looks at her feet and sees that her toes are still fused together. On the drive to school, Michael asks his daughter why she flushed her mother's fish, but the teen can't give him a reason. As punishment, he says she can't go to Connyland for the class trip. Instead of going to class, she heads to a clinic and tells Dr. Mundwiller that she noticed some changes in her body ever since she started her time of the month. She tells the doctor that her toes have fused together, and after the examination, the woman says she has syndactyly, which can be corrected through surgery. Relieved, the teen asks if the physician can do the procedure now, but Dr. Mundwiller says an orthopedic surgeon has to do it. Mia asks if her toes will look just like they did before after the surgery, perplexing the doctor. The woman says it's impossible that the toes just fused overnight, since syndactyly is a birth defect. However, the teen insists she's telling the truth, so the physician takes another look at her feet. She sees that the teen's other toes also have similar webbing-like film forming between them. The doctor suggests she undergo blood tests before they can make a diagnosis. After Mia gets her blood drawn, she sees Dr. Mundwiller make a call and stare at her. So she takes the needle from her arm and leaves the clinic. While running back home, the teen trips and falls to the ground, and she cries out her frustrations. Later in the apartment, she looks through her parents' photo albums, then asks Gabriella why there aren't any pictures of her pregnant, and why the daughter doesn't look like her or Michael. Instead of answering her daughter's questions, the woman tells her to finish her homework. The next day, Mia messages the guy from the dating website to ask if he'd like to sleep with her. In school, she tells Gianna and her friends that she's about to do the deed with a man later today. The trio joins her on the journey to a hotel in another part of the city. They wait outside the building, and Vivi hands her a prophylactic. In the hotel room, Teddy, the man from the dating website, nervously asks Mia questions while they sit next to each other on the bed. Then the man tells her to lie down while he caresses her leg. He notices bruising on her ankle, which she tried to hide with long socks and asks if someone hurt her. Uncomfortable with the situation, the teen sits up, pulls her socks, and pushes Teddy away, causing him to fall on the floor. She quickly apologizes, then heads out of the hotel. Outside, the three friends ask if she went through with the deed, and when she shakes her head, say they knew she couldn't do it. Later, she purchases makeup, bandages, and scissors at a pharmacy before heading home. In her room, she applies foundation on the bruise on her knee and covers it with a bandage. Then she uses the scissors to slice the webbing between her toes, places a band-aid on each incision, then covers everything up with long socks. That afternoon, she heads to Roberto's home and they make love in his bedroom. Before he leaves, he tells her about a party later that night. In her bedroom, Mia wears pants to cover up her legs. During dinner, Michael and Gabriella watch as she hungrily scarfs down her food. That evening, she heads to the party where Roberto greets her with a hug. Gianna and the girls join them, and playfully ask Mia if she and the guy are officially dating. As the party continues, the group becomes more intoxicated. While dancing, Gianna gives the teen a kiss on the lips, pleasantly surprising her. Moments later, one of Roberto's friends approaches the new student and asks if she'll sleep with him too, and she says maybe. After the party, Mia says Gianna can sleep at her apartment tonight. In her bedroom, the teen opens up about their family problems. Mia says she thinks she was adopted and the sympathetic friend says her mother moved to the U.S. after her parents' divorce and that she hasn't seen her in five years. The teen says she can't join the class trip to Connyland, so Gianna forges Michael's signature on the permission slip, confident that their teacher won't be able to tell. The next morning, the parents inform their daughter that they'll be attending Michael's boss's wedding that weekend, but the teen says she doesn't want to come with them. Then, Gianna joins them and introduces herself to Mia's parents. On the day of the school trip, the teacher walks down the aisle to gather the student's permission slips, and the friends breathe a sigh of relief when he takes Mia's without any trouble. Moments later, Gianna sprinkles an illicit substance in bottled juice, takes a swig, and passes it around to her friends. In Connyland, the intoxicated teens end up dazed and sitting by a wall. Mia sees Roberto, and they end up making love in a storage room. In the middle of the deed, the teen tells him to stop. Before leaving, he coldly asks if she just sleeps with anyone. In a restroom, Mia lifts up her shirt and is horrified to see that her belly button has disappeared.
disappeared. As the teen cries, she lowers her pants, exposing her heavily bruised thighs, and she passes out on the floor. When she comes to, she throws up on the floor just as Nelly walks in the restroom and sees her legs. Seconds later, Gianna and Vivi arrive and tend to their ill friend. On the bus ride home, Mia sees that she has 28 unanswered calls from her worried mother. In the apartment, the parents are in the living room waiting to confront her for going on the trip without their permission. Michael says he and Gabriella think she should start going to therapy again. That night, the teen has a hard time falling asleep, so she removes her clothes and sleeps on the floor. The next day, she finds that some of her blackened skin has peeled off and fallen on the floor during the night. She gathers the skin and hides it under her mattress. In biology class, Eric asks Mia to perform a fish dissection in front of the other students. When the bell rings, the teacher tells the teen to dispose of the fish. She waits for everyone to leave the room, then hungrily devours the remains. Unfortunately, Sophie walks in on her, so she threatens to hurt the student if she tells anybody what she witnessed. Frightened, Sophie runs out of the room. In the hallway, Roberto asks Mia if she infected him with anything when they slept together, because there's a rumor going around the school that she has a rash. She insists that she's clean, and he says he has no diseases either. In the therapy session, the impatient teen tells the psychologist that she thinks she's adopted, and believes her real parents aren't normal, which is why she inherited their unusual traits. Mia doesn't know how to properly explain her situation to the woman, so she cuts the session short. Later in the parents' bedroom, the teen searches for any proof of adoption, while Gianna looks through Gabriella's drawer and finds anti-anxiety medication. Suddenly, the mother catches the teens and reprimands them for snooping in her room. Mia confronts her mother for not having any pictures of her pregnant, and Gabriella coldly says she sometimes can't believe that she's her daughter. The next morning, Gabriella tells her to call them at the hotel if there's an emergency. After the couple leaves, Mia hears the bubbling aquarium, then proceeds to devour all the fish. She receives a message from Gianna asking if she's going to the party at the lake tonight, and she affirms. During the party, Sasha interrupts Mia and Gianna's conversation to invite them to a party tomorrow night. Later, while her friend is busy dancing with a guy, the teen takes a bottle of alcohol and lays down on the ground. Suddenly, the man Gianna was frolicking in the water with screams that she never resurfaced. Quick on her feet, Mia jumps into the water to rescue her friend. After safely taking her back to shore, the teen says she needs to go home immediately. In the apartment bathroom, the teen lifts her shirt and sees that she's grown gills in the side of her torso. Later, she picks the skin off her blackened legs. When Gianna suddenly appears by the door, the friend is stunned by her condition and says they need to go to a doctor. However, the hopeless teen says she's already done that and screams at her friend to leave her alone. The next evening, Mia ingests some of her mother's anti-anxiety medication with alcohol. Then she dazedly heads to the party Sasha told them about, where she sees Gianna talking to a guy. The men watch as the intoxicated teen dances on top of a table, and Sasha carries her off the platform to kiss her. Then the man rubs an illicit substance on Mia's gums before taking her to a room. There, he places a blindfold over her eyes before instructing her to perform degrading acts on another man, and then on himself. Fortunately, Gianna enters the room to save her friend, and tells her she doesn't have to do what the men say. The friend mentions the teen's bleeding legs, prompting the curious men to pull down Mia's pants, exposing her blackened skin. After seeing the crowd's disgusted reaction, the teen yells that what she has is contagious, then runs out of the room all the way back to the apartment. In the living room, she ignores Gianna's call, then cries as she tries to move around the apartment on her fused thighs. She hobbles to the kitchen, where she takes a knife to try and end her own life, but she passes out when she sees the blood. The next morning, Mia is horrified when she sees that the entire lower half of her body has turned into a fish's tail. She drags herself into the bathtub and keeps the water running until the entire apartment has flooded. Then she moves to her bedroom, where she rolls around on the water and calls up Gianna. When the friend arrives, she's stunned by the teen's appearance. Later, Gianna drags Mia to her truck, places her on the bed, and drives her toward the nearest beach. After they arrive, the pair sit on the bed of the truck where the teen asks to borrow her friend's phone. She calls up her mother, but Gabriella can't talk for long because of the wedding, so Mia says goodbye one last time. On the beach, Gianna asks Mia if she's scared, and the teen says she isn't. The friend cries, so the teen tells her to not be sad and thanks her for everything she's done. After the last embrace, Mia drags herself toward the water and dives into the peaceful depths of the sea. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.